I have a story to share with you. I came to this country in 1984 as a grad student, just having graduated from IIT Madras. I was trained in uh, Carnatic music, and Carnatic music, as you know, is based on Indian ragas, and you have one person performing and a lot of people listening. Um, when I came to this country, I got exposed to symphonic music for the first time. So I still remember the time when I used to sit in a metallurgical analysis lab, polishing specimen, listening to WGUC, and uh, attending symphonies, and wondering what it would sound like if Indian ragas were given a symphonic shape. So. Um, this idea uh, haunted me for a while, and I took some classes, took some training in, uh, taught myself music theory and MIDI, and started writing my, started writing and recording my own music, and released my first album in 1992. Then a friend of mine said, Kanix, why don't you start a choir?" So I got hold of about 20 of my friends, taught them music. These were people that were not trained in music before, but had had a good year. Worked with them for like a four-month period, and very quickly put up up a program called Basant with uh, music based on Indian ragas with choral harmony. And the result surprised all of us. All of a sudden, there was a sound that we had never heard before. And uh, th this uh, recording was something that I shared with a new friend that I made, Dr. Catherine Roma, uh, an established choral conductor in Cincinnati. And when she saw this, she was blown away by the fact that here there was a group of 20 people who had had no training in music, who were looking at, who were not looking at a staff, uh, uh, no, who were not looking at a score, but they were just belting away complex scores. So she said, hey, Connix, we should work together. So in 1996, I wrote this production called The Blue Jewel, a celebration of the environment, where we created a combined sound of Indian voices singing along with SATB, full-fledged Western choirs. And, uh, and th that was a totally new sound and a new choral experience when you heard Sanskrit chants sung by Indian voices and Western voices together in a, in a composite uh, range of voices. Then 9-11 happened. Then uh, um, Kathy and I got together one day and she said, hey, Connix, you should write something bigger than what you've written before. And you make sh please make sure that, that you include us in this new expression of a vision for peace for the earth. So I had this idea in my mind of 100 to 150 singers singing together with an orchestra in front of them, with the dancers from different parts of India, and all singing a grand narrative of India, which would defeat, which, which would be totally against all the stereotypes that we were exposed to, and paint a very powerful picture, picture of Indian culture on one hand, and tell the story of universal peace on the other hand. So this I titled Shanti, A Journey of Peace, and I needed 100 singers for it. So I shared this idea with my wife. And like uh, any sensible person, she said this was a crazy idea, and I was, I was crazy. So I asked my friends, and they all unanimously agreed with her. But that didn't stop me from knocking door, door after door, recruiting singers, training them. And very soon enough, we had like 100 people to sing this music. Many people had, and this was an incredible range of people, uh, uh, Punjabis, Malayalis, Assamis, and um, Tamilians, Bengalis, and it was a very diverse group of people. The message was common, the language was common, the music was common. At that point in time, what I realized was uh, this, the, the initial experiment that I had started out with trying to find out what ragas would sound in a symphonic form had changed into something else and had opened up a new uh, uh, window for me. So it's, I realized that mu it, the work that I was doing was not just about music alone. It was about all about people. It was about getting people together. It was, working, it was about working together on something much larger than ourselves. So seeing the success of Shanti, the city of Cincinnati invited us to come and perform it downtown Cincinnati. We did it in 2006, and this was uh, with an audience of 2,600 people, something which we had never thought of before when I wrote Basant in 1994. So, a friend of mine, Raju Venkatraman, who lives in Allentown, Pennsylvania, a classmate of mine from IIT, said, Kanix, we should try to do this in this area. But how do you transport 150 to 200 people there? So, we decided to do the whole project with singers from the Allentown, Pennsylvania area. So, people would drive from New Jersey and other places in Pennsylvania nearby to come for rehearsals. And very soon enough, we had Shanti with about 20 people driving from Cincinnati to give support to the singing brethren in the Allentown area. Now, this is when we, re we realized that we had recreated the Shanti experience by crowdsourcing in, for the very first time back in 2006. So the success of Shanti in the Bay Area and uh, uh, 
what we saw here, which was no different from what we did in Cincinnati. So what we realized was at the end of Shanti, when the curtains go down, there's so much of joy, there's so much of energy. People are just hugging each other. And the energy ref reflects off of the audience. And at the end, everybody's so charged with a sense of bigness of purpose, the sense of belonging to something much larger than yourselves. And it was the same sensation that was created at Allentown, Pennsylvania, and this word started getting around. So I started getting invitations for uh, doing this from other places. So we did this in Tampa, we did this in Fort Lauderdale, Minneapolis, and so many other places. And then uh, uh, the, one of the biggest invitations I got was from Europe to recreate this choral experience in uh, The Hague. So I worked with an all Surinamese Indian choir to recreate the Shanti experience. It was not the same production, it was a different one in The Hague. And then um, two years ago, we, produced, uh, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of Shanti. Throughout all this, a number of distinctions have begin to, begun to emerge. So this is completely in the art world. This is completely in the community world. But some of the models that we see in technology are, uh, are clearly apply here. So for instance, Shanti and all these choral productions are nothing other than remotely, op remotely operated, offshore developed, and onshore delivered projects, and on-site delivered projects. It's no different from that, okay? And, uh, the, the, last year, we, just a couple of weeks back, we, we performed Shanti in the Bay Area, and we used technology to the hilt. Unlike the Shanti performances about 12 years ago, we were able to use uh, Skype for our rehearsals. We, we, were used to, we were able to use WhatsApp for communications, and the whole thing was totally uh, a, a different experience altogether. So um, at the end of it, what do I have to share? One thing is that the... The, the energy that it generates um, lets me feel that this is something that I want to keep doing all my life. So we have bil built Indian community choirs that sing in Sanskrit, a raga-based music with Western harmony in about 16 cities around the world. I would like to take it to 100 cities in the next 20 years or so. And the other thing I've realized is that uh, when a group of very diverse people gets together with a shared sense of purpose, the air that we breathe begins to change and magic begins to happen. A shared sense of purpose that can only be expressed by an ancient prayer from India, which goes, may all be blessed with boundless joy, may all be free from needless fear, and in this world of harmony, may peace and joy prevail. And if you say it in Sanskrit, it is sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu pashyantu. 